phase just to kind of analyze data when we talk about statistics, which is what this unit is all about. Okay, so in general, there's kind of two ways that you kind of analyze, or two different categories that you analyze data. So they call this measures of central location, it's also called measures of central tendency. Um, those two things are kind of interchangeable. That's your like mean, median, mode, percentiles we're going to do tomorrow, quartiles we will do today. And then measures of variability, that's like how spread out the data is, whereas measures of central location or central tendency is like how close is the data to the, to the middle, basically. The spread is like how far spread out is the data. Okay, those would include range, interquartile range. We're going to talk about those two today. And then variance and standard deviation. We're going to talk about those in a couple of days, actually. So measures of central tendency and spread. Today, mostly measures of central tendency. Now, mean, what's another word for a mean? Average, so you guys already know that. This is just the sum of the data values but divided by the number of data values. Now, I don't know if you guys will know this or not. So there is a symbol for the mean and it's an X with almost like a little line segment over it, um, you would read this as X bar is how they talk about that. Uh, but actually, it's a symbol that you will see in the calculator when they do some stuff with the mean. There's a, that symbol notates the mean of a data set. Now, the median, okay, says the middle value in the data set. We count in from the ends. You have to arrange the data in order from least to greatest before you do that. And... Um, I have a little little notation next to this. this is called Q2. That stands for the second quartile. I don't know if you guys would have seen that, but the median and the second quartile are the same thing. <coughs> Excuse me. Mode is the data value or data item it says there that occurs most often. So I always remember mode is most often. Now, there is a possibility, it depends on the data set. Maybe you have you know, a couple different values repeated the same number of times. You could have two modes, you could have three modes to a data set, you could have no mode, maybe none of the values are repeated at all, um, or maybe you just have one. It's just going to kind of depend, but you can have zero, one, or more modes to a data set. And then range. This is not like, tell me the possible y values on the graph. The range for a data set is just like the maximum value minus the minimum value. So whatever your largest data value is minus I'm just going to do max minus min. So that would be the range. So um, range is how far from the least value to the greatest value. Okay, so we're just going to see what you all maybe remember about how to calculate some of this stuff. So I've got the data here in kind of a weird display. So this is the frequency table. So it says the frequency table shows the number of job offers received by students within two months of graduating with a mathematics degree from a really small college here. You'll see why I'm saying that in a second. Uh, find the mean median mode for the job offers per student. Okay, so the way a frequency chart reads, this says there's two students that got zero job offers. So if we're talking about our job offers, I want to write out my data. I'm going to write zero twice. And then I've got two students with one job offer. So I would write one twice. I got four students that have two job offers. So I'm going to write the number two four times. I've got five students that have three job offers, so I'm going to write the number three five times. And I've got two people that get four job offers, so I'm going to write the number four twice. Okay, I should have asked you this before I start. How many total students are being represented in this group? Fifteen, okay. So you just add these up, like two, two, four, five, two. There's fifteen students here being represented in this data. And so I was saying it must be a small school. And how would I find the mean or the average of that data? Add them up. Okay, we're just gonna you're just gonna literally add these up. You wouldn't have to add the zero if you. I mean, that's not gonna affect it, but that's included in the number of students. If you add all these guys up, can you tell me what they're getting? Should be thirty three. Okay, if you add all those up. Now, you're just going to divide that by how many people. So there's 15 people that are graduating here that get these job offers. And the mean, it's not, it's not always like a nice number. Sometimes it's not. This is 2.2. So average number of job offers, they would maybe say to people coming in, and they get 2.2 job offers per student on average when they come out. Okay, how would I find the median? 
Cover them up. That's what I like to do too. Okay, now I usually just I, I feel free if you want to grab a highlighter or whatever. The more data I have, the more I knock off at the same time. So I might just do like one, two, three, and then I'll do one, two, three. You're just going into the middle. And then maybe I'll do like two and two. And then when I get closer to the middle, I maybe just do one on each end. Now I'm gonna make just like a note here, real quick. You have an you have an odd number of data values. If you have an odd number of data values, then the median should actually be one of the values in the set. If it's even, we're going to do that on the other side of the notes here, but if it's even, that's not the case. So this would be the median, also called the second quartile. So either one of those are interchangeable. There's my median. What would you tell me the mode would be? Three, because you got three five times. What would you tell me the range would be? Four. four. The range, just the biggest number, which is four, minus the smallest number, which is zero, so the range is four. Okay. Is anybody having a question so far? Okay. Have you guys done quartiles before? Is that form? Okay, form concept. Okay. Now, um, here's the, this is not hard to do, I promise, but it's different if you have an even number of data values versus if you have an odd number. So I'm going to show you both. Okay, quartiles, just in general, it's going to divide your data into four equal sets. Now, the way that's displayed is not necessarily evenly spaced, but it divides your data into four groups. Each one will represent 25% of the data. Okay, now, here are just the labels. So Q1, called the first quartile, also sometimes called the lower quartile. And this is just going to be the median of the lower half of your data. So basically, here, I'm going to write this, the left of the median. That's going to be on the left side of the median, the lower half of the data. It's going to be like as you go down the smaller numbers. Okay, the median itself is called second quartile or the median. Those are the two special names for that. It's not an upper or lower because it is going to be in between the two. So second quartile and median are the same thing. You calculate that just exactly what we did above. And then what they call Q3 or the third quartile, this is called also the upper quartile. If I can spell. Okay, now this will be the median of the upper half of the data and the upper half is going to be on the right side of the median. Scooch that up. Okay, I, and I don't ask you to do this, but I'm just going to do it for that data set above so we can so you guys can see this. Okay, if your median is in the data set, okay, so that's the case here if you have an odd data. Literally just think of like a line like going right down the middle of that too. So the lower half of the data is on the left side, the upper half of the data is on the right side. You do not include that value when you calculate the median. So just literally would just like throw it out. So just pretend this is the lower half of the data. Now I would just go through here and just like I did for the median, but only on the left side here, I would just do this and count to the middle. It ends up being a data value here, but that one would be my first quartile or my lower quartile or my Q1. Same thing on the upper half of the data, if the median is a data value, bless you, do not include that. Just literally like think about throwing that out of the data set. I'm only looking at what's on the right side of that. I would just do that same process for how I would find the median. And this one ends up being a value in the data set here. This would be my Q3, which is actually three for that one. But if you have an odd number of data, just literally like throw that out and just look at the left or the right when you're finding the first quartile or the third quartile. Okay, and those are part of the five number summary. So the five number summary, yep. Yeah. There's only three. I'm I'm gonna show you. That's what we're doing right now. Because you're like, yeah, you're like, where's the fourth thing, right? Okay, I'm gonna show you. Okay, the five number summary, and you're probably gonna be like you just said quartiles, and that should be four, but it's actually five values you need for this. I'm gonna show it to you. Okay, so 
You need the minimum value, whatever that is. You need the first quartile, Q1. You need the median, which is the second quartile. You need the third quartile. And then you need the maximum. And again, you're like, no, Ms. Crody, you just told me it was quartiles, which I'm going to show you this in one second. I probably should put this other word higher up, but I'm just going to give you a real quick definition. We're not really going to use this much today. This is important when you find outliers for a data set, which we're going to do tomorrow. Um, but the inner quartile range, you call it the IQR, so I don't have to say out inner quartile range. Anywho, um, that is just whatever your Q3 minus your Q1 is. Um, if you guys want to look up to the data set we were just looking at in our job offers there, uh, our third quartile was three, our first quartile was one, so our inner quartile range would be two, just as a little example. We're going to work more with that, like I said, that's more to do with outliers and things like that for a data set. Okay, now here's why the quartiles, there's three of them, and you're like, there are four quartiles, I'm going to show you why. Okay, box and whiskers plot is a display of the quartiles. Okay, you're just literally going to start with like a dot. And on the left side, that'll be the minimum. And then just draw yourself a line segment. Doesn't have to be a particular length. And kind of, I'm going to try and make it so that line segment kind of connects to the middle of this. But I'm just going to make a rectangle. And then I'm just going to just draw another little line segment. doesn't have to be the same length. And another little dot. The line segment and the dot, those are called the whiskers on your box and whiskers plot. The rectangle is obviously called the box. Um, and anywhere you want, but just somewhere inside this rectangle, draw a vertical line. And it doesn't have to be, you'll notice I purposely did not put mine directly and like I was not eyeballing the middle or something like that because it's not usually in that, quick, in that place. This is your maximum on the right side. Okay, now you're still primarily like, what is this garbage? All right, well, this one here, the end of the left side of the box is whatever number that would be, would be your Q1. We're going to have like a number line on these so we can kind of estimate these values. The line that's inside the box, that's your median, that's your Q2. And the line that ends the box on the right side, that is your upper quartile or your third quartile. And you're probably still like, I've got five different things. What the heck is going on here? Why are we calling these quartiles? Here is how this works. Between the whisker and the box right here, between the minimum and Q1, this would represent 25% of the data. And these are not necessarily evenly spaced. They could be, but most of the time they're not. But 25% of your data is represented here. Then between Q1 and Q2, that's another 25%. Between Q2 and Q3, that's another 25%. And between Q3 and the max, that other whisker there, that's 25%. So even though I'm using five different numbers here, I have four parts to this display. So like the little line segment's a part, the first part of the rectangle, the second part of the rectangle, and then the second line segment. That's why it's a quartile, because it's four 25% spacing out the data. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, we're going to draw one of these on the back for a data set. So I have on the back. Now, this is a little teeny tiny bit different. So we had an odd number of data values on our example. This one has an even number of data values, just to show you guys what can happen here. So you're welcome. These are already in numerical order. So they're already written from least to greatest. Sometimes when you get a data set, you might have to organize the data from least to greatest, but I don't want us to have to waste a bunch of time trying to do that because it can be very annoying if I'm being honest. Okay, so these are in order already, least to greatest. So super easy. The minimum should just be the number to the far left and the maximum should just be the number to the far right. So the, the youngest person in this group of this book club is 23. The oldest person is 51. Okay, now what I would calculate first is the median because you've got to figure out the lower half and the upper half based on where the median is at. Okay, so I have an even number of data values here. So if I just kind of do what I did on the front, I'm just I'm going to do two at, two at a time. And then let's see. Okay, now if you have an even number of data values, what's going to happen here? is I don't have a value 
in the actual data set that's going to represent my median. Like it's a tie between these two. So what do I do with those two numbers? Add them, divide by two. So you find an average right then and there. Okay, so directly in between these two, it's not part of the data set. Now in this case, it'd probably be pretty quick for you to find an average. If I add those two together, divide by two, we're just going to get a nice number. We're going to get 41. And so that's going to be my median. Okay, now on the front, remember we had an odd data set and we just like threw out that median in the middle. If you had to take an average, which I had to do here, when you do the lower quartile and the upper quartile, you're just going to go, you're going to include on the left side, I would include the 40. And on the right side, when I do that, I include the 42 when I find the median here. So you're directly in the middle. I'm not going to throw anything out here, but on the left side of that, I'm going to use that 40. So I'm going to go just like I did on the front. And in this particular example, you end up your median of the lower half or the left half of that data is actually going to be an average again. So here would be my Q1. So 37 and 38, add those up, divide by 2, it's going to be 37.5. So it's not a nice number, that's okay. On the upper side, again, the median was not one of the data values. You use the 42 as part of this group. So 42 on that upper side, and I end up doing an average here again. This would be my Q3. Between 45 and 47 is going to be 46. Okay, and then I've just got a little number line here to help us kind of space this out. But I'm just going to try and draw the box and whiskers plot the best I can. So I'm going to come up kind of somewhere kind of in between and draw a dot at where I think 23 would be. These go by twos, so just kind of estimate. You do not have to do this, but if you want to write the number in there, if you feel like your estimate doesn't look really close or something, just to kind of let people know, like that's what that's supposed to be. And then I'm going to come over, let's see, here's 36, here's 38. So like 37.5, I'm going to draw a vertical line. And again, if you want to put like 37.5 on there, that's fine. You don't have to. My median is 41. So I'm going to put a vertical line at 41. And I'm going to put another vertical line at 46. And then my maximum is 51. So at the fifth, where, about, where you think 51 is, put a dot there. And then I usually just go back and I just create a rectangle with those vertical bars I drew. And then just kind of line segment from the 23 to the rectangle and line segment from the 51 to the rectangle. Okay, now this doesn't ask you to analyze this in any way, but in this case, so 25% of the people in this group are going to be between the ages of 23 and 37 and a half. 25% of the people in this group are between 37 and a half and 41. 25% are between 41 and 46. And 25% are between 46 and 51. So like if I told you, I'd be like, hey, I want something I could make a comment. I could say, 75% of the people in this group are old, or 37 and a half or older. I could say that. Or I could say 50% um, of the people in this group are under 41. There's different comments that you could make, and we're going to analyze these in the next couple of examples. Okay, so I've got in example three a box and whiskers plot here just already made for you. And I promise, unless it has numbers written on it, it should match up with a nice number on the number line. So you're not going to have to do anything crazy. So whatever number it looks like it's on, go ahead and assume it's that number. So these are test scores for a certain class period. What is the lowest test score if you're looking at this box? 55. Okay. What would you tell me your Q1 is? 70. What's your median? 75. Okay, what's your Q3? Everyone's quiet. It's 85. What was the highest? What was the highest test grade? 100. Okay, so this is not too bad. All right. Now, don't don't feel bad. All right. It's not terrible. All right. So I got 25 percent, 25 percent. I'm just gonna write this in here. You don't have to write these 25 percent in. Okay. Now, then they're gonna ask you a question. It says what percentage of the class scored dot 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 
above a 75? 50%. Okay, what percentage of the class scored below a 70? 25. Okay, now, it says, can you determine the average or the mean test score from the class if you just look at the box plot? Can you figure out what the average would be? You can't figure it out. I don't tell you how many kids are in this class. I don't tell you anything like that. So um, and there's not enough information. If you just have a box plot, um, you cannot figure out the mean. You can tell me, you know, 25% or 75% or 100% of the day, like 100% of the kids in this class scored over 55. You could tell me that. Or you could tell me nobody in the class scored a 20%. You can't tell me other than that, the mean, because it's just not enough information just from the box plot itself. So. If a question asks you something like that, that's not something you can determine from a box plot. You can determine the median, but you cannot determine the actual average or the mean. Okay, now sometimes, whoops, you guys will see something like what I have in this bottom example. This is called a double box plot because, very fancy, there are two box, well, box and whiskers, or I just call it a box plot. Sometimes you can call it that. Um, these are two different cities, but the same number line. And sometimes this is just used as a comparison of data. So in this example, I've got average monthly temperatures for two different cities here. The one a little bit closer to the number line is Boston, and the one that's a little bit further away is Seattle. Okay, so um, you can see on these box plots, some of these numbers were, were kind of estimated. So if that's the case, they'll actually write the number on here. So like, I'm not looking at that graph and coming up with 51.5 unless they tell me that. So that's, that's written for you. So go through here and see how much of this you could actually fill out for each of these cities, just, just from the box plot. And I'm going to write it on my paper so you can kind of check if you want to. And I just briefly mentioned this on the front, and like I said, we're going to use this with outliers tomorrow. That last thing it asks you for the interquartile range IQR, that is just the Q3 value minus the Q1 value. It's used to find outliers. We're going to do that tomorrow. Um, but just, just as a little practice here for today. I'm just going to jot these guys down. Oh, thank you. Okay. Is anybody seeing anything on there? They're not getting right, or maybe I got it wrong. I don't. I think I did okay. Any questions about how to read these at all? Okay. Now, make sure you think about the city I'm talking about. Okay, this is what percentage of the Seattle average monthly temperatures are under 52 degrees? What percentage? 50. Here's the 52. So you got a quartile from the rectangle and a quartile from the whisker there. So that would be 50%. Now Boston's closer to the number line. What percentage of Boston average monthly temperatures are over 66 and a half? 25%. Okay. Now, this last one says 75% of the monthly average temperatures are above 45 degrees for which city? Yeah. Seattle. Okay, is anybody having a question about how to read the box plot at all? Or questions about how to find the mean, the quartiles on the front, anything? Okay. The homework should be in your...